Now, I don't want to go making assumptions, but according to the stats, you guys are quite a charitable bunch. In fact, half of you will make a donation to a charity at some point this month. And between everyone here, we'll donate over £100,000 to charity over the course of this year. I'll always remember the first time I made my first donation to charity. I was 12 years old, it was Christmas time, and I was sat in my family kitchen watching a film. When this advert came on, showing these harrowing images of starving children with hopeless faces. And this voice came on and it said, donate five pounds, save a child's life today. There's one word which can sum up what I felt in that moment, pity. I've since wondered whether our ability to feel pity represents one of our better traits, like love, generosity, and forgiveness. Or whether actually pity is one of our less desirable emotions, like envy, jealousy, or fear. Today, I want to suggest it's time we stop using pity to raise funds, and that instead, we think more creatively about how we can use technology and social media to build more meaningful connections between donors in the West and beneficiaries in the developing world. This time last year, I was working late in the office, and I got a phone call from a friend of mine. And this friend had never once called me at work before, so when I heard her voice, my mind began to race with all the bad news she might have to tell me. In fact, what she went on to say was something so remarkable that I struggled to believe it that she'd been accepted into university. And to you, this may sound very normal, but to me, this was like hearing I'd come first in a pub quiz in Oxford. <laughs> These things just don't happen in my experience. I first met Marlene seven years ago. I was traveling in Peru at the time, and I met a local teacher who took me up to a district called Corca, a remote indigenous district high up in the Andes of Peru. And it was there I met Marlene. She was 12 years old, she'd just finished primary school, and it looked very likely that her education would end there. She was just one of hundreds of children that would face these huge walks to get to school in the morning, sometimes as many as four hours to get to school in the morning and four hours to get back home in the afternoon. When I first heard about this situation, I decided to start the charity Amantani, along with two Peruvian colleagues. And seven years on, Marlene's news is so incredible because she's actually the first girl from her entire district to be accepted into university. Here she is in pink on the day she found out her news. When I got back to the UK in 2008, I was 19 years old. I didn't have a clue about how to raise funds. So I began to look at what everyone else was doing. And I came across some charities doing some fantastic campaigns. But I soon realized that the main currency charities were using in exchange for their donations was pity. And these tactics have helped NGOs to raise billions of pounds for their causes. But these funds come at a cost to society that isn't being accounted for. What organizations may gain in funds, poor communities lose in dignity, empowerment, and voice. Whenever I take a group photo of the children in Peru, I can't tell you how long they take to get ready. It's infuriating. They take forever to do their hair, to choose their clothes. They even practice their poses. And sometimes when I've taken the photo, they'll look over my shoulder, they'll insist that I delete it and that we start all over again. So one thing that this makes clear is that these children care about their appearance, and they care about how they're portrayed. Pity is not only unfair to the people portrayed in the campaign, but it actually distorts our perception of life in developing communities. As Kant suggested back in the 1700s, pity leads to improper relationships, precisely because it exposes a hierarchy in that relationship. When we look at communities in this way, and when we look at human beings in this way, looking at their problems and defining them by their problems without looking at the potential on the other side. We turn human beings into victims. We dehumanize them. We promote this idea that communities don't have the capacity to solve their own problems, and that it's we in the West who must single-handedly devise the solution. 
So we got talking with the team at Amantani about how we can bring some more balance to this relationship, how we can promote a more meaningful connection between donors in the West and beneficiaries in the developing world, how we can promote a relationship built on respect and mutual understanding, built on the things we share in common and not the things that set us apart. Could it help us to change the way we look at charity and to change the way we look at communities in the, in the developing world? Not as passive victims deserving of our pity, but as powerful agents of change. So last year, we teamed up with our friends at Andina Restaurant to launch what was our first major fundraising campaign called Meet My World. And it all started a year before we got together with the children and their parents to share a little idea that we'd had. The children's mission, if they chose to accept it, was to create a series of short instructional films that would teach people all over the world the traditional skills and knowledge from their communities. The films were to be entirely written and presented by the children themselves, and they had complete control over what they wanted to say. This was the starting point to an amazing educational process for the children. They went out into their communities to speak with their parents, their grandparents, to look for the skills they wanted to show off to the world and the things that they were proud of. And they came back to us with the most incredible skills. Heidi wanted to show us how to build an oven from mud. Amilcar wanted to show us how to plow the land with bulls. Roxana had a few tricks up her sleeve for how to get rid of that bad mood with medicinal herbs. And Angelica wanted to help you all turn your lovable family pet into a delicious guinea pig stew. <laughs> the children proved themselves to be wonderful teachers, full of charisma, charm, and knowledge. But we all know that every teacher needs a willing set of pupils. And this is where our donors came in. We organized two major screenings in London and Lima, and these helped the films to get picked up on social media and to travel all over the world to over 110 different countries where they were viewed by more than 30,000 people. But the most special event was still to come, back in the community with the children and their parents, where we, for the first time, had a chance to report back on the response that the films had received from around the world. And it was, this was the first time that the children got to meet their pupils. Spurred on by some familiar faces, thousands and thousands of people sent photos back to the children to say thank you for the lessons that they'd learned from the videos. And in doing so, brought the process of Meet My World to a close. Now, at Amantani, we don't claim to have all the answers. This is just one small example, but we hope it's meaningful and that we hope it provides one example of a different way to reimagine this relationship and a different way to raise funds. By asking our children to be the teachers and our donors to be the pupils, we opened up a whole new channel of communication. And we, we, we let these two groups of people to communicate on an equal playing field. For the children, it was empowering. They got to see the way their films touched lives on the other side of the world. And for our donors, it was inspiring to see these children with potential and talent. So I couldn't now leave without showing you one of these films. And uh, your teacher today is a young lad called Yuri. He's a very cheeky chap, and he's got a very, very special lesson to share with you all. So please embrace your role as the pupils and enjoy your lesson from Yuri. Yo me llamo Yuri, estoy en la comunidad de Chanca, estoy estudiando en Corca. Y cuando termine mi colegio quisiera estudiar en ingeniería civil. Quiero construir carreteras que llegue a toda parte. A mí me gustaría que me reconozcan como un gran ingeniero y que tengan cariño hacia mí. 
Hace un montón de un año y medio me gusta que me ayuden con las tareas. Quiero enseñarles cómo se atrapan los peces con las manos. Estén sí muy atentos a lo que les voy a decir. ¿Están atentos? Ok. Tienes que subir tu pantalón hasta la altura de la rodilla y quitarte la chompa. Si es grande el río, no te atrevas. Puede ser peligroso. Si es pequeño, puede ser. Y sumerge tus manos debajo de las piedras. Si sientes que resbala entre tus dedos, atento, es un pez. Si se va a otro lugar, tienes que seguir y atrapar de su cuello y botarlo fuera del río. Si has juntado varios peces, podrías llevarte a tu casa y prepararte un plato que a mí me gusta peces fritos y papa frita. Me gusta coger los peces que comparto con mis familias. Además, cuando cocino mi mamá, es rico. Espero que les haya gustado. Si no, me avisan. Disfruten de los peces. Hasta la próxima. Now, officially, we've stopped accepting thank yous back to the children. They're actually getting a bit big-headed. Um, <laughs> but we couldn't turn down this opportunity to get one last big thank you for Yuri. So I'd like your help in thanking Yuri. It's going to be a little bit like this. Gracias! But times 1,800. So I'd like you all, on the count of three, to shout at the top of your lungs. Hang on, I've got to get back a bit. I'd like you all to shout as loud as you can, gracias. Okay. One, two, three. Gracias! <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you very much.